Hi there, thanks very much for joining me again. Today I'm going to be working on this stretched canvas which I've already applied a good coat of titanium white paint with quite a rough texture so this is what I want to get showing through. My idea behind this artwork is to show you how I build an abstract painting. It is not a random exercise. There are different ways that I work and this is what I want to explain as I work through. So I'm starting off the base with just a good coat of sort of a taup brown coat of acrylic paint mixed with some more titanium white. And then I'm actually going to blend in some really nice orangey colours and some golden yellow sorts of shades. Um, again mixed with the white and blending that in. I will list all the colours in the descriptions later on so you can have a look which I use and I'm just getting this applied so that we can work and build up our picture. Working with abstract is very much about building layers, a lot of which may get lost later on, it doesn't matter, you need to start somewhere. I'm leaving the centre area at this moment to be quite pale. As you can see I've actually got vertical and horizontal paint um, areas. Now I'm actually using a piece of paper put into a clear plastic folder and on that folder I've actually put some burnt sienna and I'm just spreading it around with this um, palette knife so that I can use this roller or brayer. Some of you may be familiar from using that with jelly plates or printing and it's just a good way to get different effects with your paint. So make sure that the roller is nicely covered as you can see it's fairly even. And then I've actually put a piece of paper against the canvas and I'm just rolling the brayer up there because what I want is a sort of a straightish line where the paint is. And then I can use the same colour in a top right hand corner. And this has got quite a bit of texture in it which I'm quite pleased about um, because it's actually going to show through as a lovely bit of texture as we go, go on. And on the right hand side, the far right hand side, I've just done a stripe of burnt umber paint. So I'm going to now do the same with some white, this is titanium white, and again using a piece of paper as a guard just to protect a little bit. And I want to take some white up into that top left hand corner. So just rolling it up, it's quite satisfying actually. If your paint is too thick, just keep rolling over it until it's spread as thin as you would like it. And now I've got an old CD and what I've got here is an acrylic paint pen which are quite widely available and you just get it working by hitting it on the, the lid. And because this is acrylic it's not going to run, it's not going to disappear. So I'm making some circular arcs because again this is going to break up. We've got lines and boxes so far and I want to introduce a softness and some different shapes. Again, these lines may disappear, we may paint over them, that's okay, we can do that. But this goes, gives us a guideline of where we're to start from. And then it's a question of deciding where else you want to put them. So I've gone ahead and added a couple more higher up this canvas. And now I'm just going to fill in this bottom arc here just with titanium white, just so that we've got somewhere to start from. Don't be afraid of applying a paint just to get going, you can always change it later because acrylics can be painted over with no great problem at all. And now working in that top circle there, I'm applying some of this lovely orange. I want to start building up some layers of colour. I'm building the orange in first but I will be mixing it with other shades as we go on. I haven't actually got a title for this painting so if any of you watching think of something then that by all means let me know. I won't tell you what my husband's suggestion was but I'm sure that you can come up with a better version than him. So it's a constant blending. What we need to do is just to keep on softening the paint and just keep blending till we've got the shades that we want. And now I'm bringing a little bit more depth down to this bottom sort of arc of this circle where we've drawn the, the lines there. And again just mixing, blending, keeping working I think the thing with building an acrylic painting is 
I don't know whether this is just me, but it's very difficult to start with an actual idea unless you draw something out first, a sketch maybe. For me, it's much more intuitive. It's much more how I feel as I'm painting and what I see actually occurring on the canvas as I'm working. So, for example, I've realised that I now want a little bit of a darker shade on this bottom left-hand side because we've got quite a dark strip down the right-hand side. So I like to balance the two and just using a soft brush helps to take that paint down to the sides of your canvas, which is very easy to overlook and it can be quite difficult to get the colour on. And now I'm actually taking that same colour, it's an Indian red acrylic paint, up to that top rectangle that we first put in. And because it's got that lovely texture, using the palette knife across it gives them much more interest because it, it catches on the raised parts and sinks into other parts. We will come back to that. But now I'm introducing Payne's Grey mixed with white and a little tiny bit of a Wedgwood Blue. I want to sort of get a cool shade to balance the warm orange. So again, it's about balancing. It's about contrasts and getting those colours and shapes to be in harmony, but at the same time to provide interest. And I'm also doing that across on the right hand side again. I want to take this under that top circle because I want to have a lot more pop to that top circle and adding a darker colour beneath it where we've got that light shade is really going to do that. So I'm just using the soft flat brush just to carry that colour along. Now it's a question of blending in with the colour that's beneath it. So helping that is a little bit of blending with the titanium white. The problem with mixing a yellow with a bluish colour is that you can end up with green. So do be very careful what your colours look like when you start to blend them. Now I'm just going in on top of this grey with quite neat Payne's grey on the brush and I'm just going to bring that down. This is the start of making the colours pop. As you can see I've done that on the left hand side of the canvas already and beneath the other circle. So it's going to create a good balance and harmony there. I'm just going to wash the brush because I want to add in a little bit of um, paler colour later. And now using a slightly larger palette knife, a mid-sized one, I'm actually scraping that Payne's grey horizontally and then pulling it down so it's blending it but it's also giving texture at the same time. You can actually pull quite hard on paint, you can give it a really good drag down the canvas. Um, it's hard to go wrong because you can always scrape it off uh, or you can always go over it later on. So I'm just adding a few different shades, that was the blue, the Wedgwood blue, it goes in beautifully with the Payne's grey. Black is a great colour, but it can be very, very harsh. So I personally really prefer the Payne's Grey. It's dark enough, but it has a little bit less harshness to it. So you can keep on adding and see how when you pull it down over that gold colour, it really stands out. It's just going to add great interest. The, the grazing technique, which I've used before in some of my videos, is a wonderful one for adding texture to your acrylic works. And this is what I've done. I've continued adding little bits and I've added a lot more shading underneath that top circle. However, there are little things that I want to do. You can see here I've added a lot more dark and I want to do a lot more dark on this circle as well. So we've still got work to do. And again, as I said to you, it's a work in progress. You must constantly assess and reassess and go in and decide what you like best. So and again, I'm adding in some layers with grazing the paint across this area of this circle. We have lost the original white arc that we put in, but I'm not bothered about that. That's not a problem. Um, we can do what we want to with this. This is part of the enjoyment of the process.
Blending colours like this with a palette knife is really good practice. You will end up with some really interesting colours because the paint will stay on the palette knife and mix into other colours. You could find some really interesting shades that you did not know existed. And if it goes wrong, just scrape it off. Okay, so I'm much happier with this circle here now and I've added some more depth down here. I'm finding that there's a solid line there which actually corresponds with the bottom of that circle so I want to try and disguise that a little bit. Um, I also want to take that grey down across that top part just to balance out what we've done on the other side and I want to make that part of the circle lighter and I'm going to do something with this brown line as well. This top also needs a little bit of something to balance it. Okay, so going in now with the orange again and the white. And this time I'm also using some zinc white instead of just the titanium white. Uh, zinc white is a lot softer. Uh, it allows you to blend it a little bit more easily, I think, than titanium white in some ways. It doesn't go quite as chalky. Uh, it leaves a little bit more clarity, so it's a good a good white to work with. I'm also going to add a little bit of that beautiful burnt sienna on that edge as well, just to make it even darker on that little outside circle. That's much better. I'm happier with that top circle. And now I'm going to just add a little bit of detail into this top left-hand side. And I'm going back in with the burnt umber, the same as I've done the line on the right-hand side using a piece of card just to mask a line so that I've got a little bit of a straight line. You could do it with your palette knife as I've done before but it's useful to perhaps use a piece of card to do that. And now I'm going to do the same here with this white. Again, I want a sort of sharp line. So using a fresh piece of card, I can put the titanium white right against it. And hopefully what we'll get is a nice crisp line of the white against the different colours. I'll just apply it quite thickly and it's helping that line to disappear. There we go. Beautiful. I like that effect. It's really quite a good one. We'll add just a little bit more grey under that circle so I can pull it down into that wet white acrylic paint and then again add some more layers with the palette knife. Looking very effective. So now I'm just going to continue building on this and I will come back and show you what I've done and hopefully you'll like it. Okay, so here we are and it's really come alive. I've added a little bit more texture to that box at the top a little bit more to the bottom and and the top right hand corner I've done some lines across so we've got some uh, some horizontals too. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that it explains a little bit about the process of making an abstract painting. Please join me again for next time and in the meantime keep painting. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.